Hello guys and welcome to a pickups video. I know it's been a while and I apologize for that, but I, I don't see me uploading a lot of these, but I do have a few planned in the future, so if you're waiting for those, they'll be up soon. So I figured I'd start off with newer games. So here we go. Now this first one was a gift, and I actually gotta find a place to sit these. This first one was actually a gift from a friend, and I've mentioned him before, he's the one that gave me the Zelda games and stuff, and we've been friends for nearing on 15 years now, and ever since he got his first job, he's had this insanely bad habit, and I know some of you do too, and that's every time a Pokemon game releases, he buys both versions of that game, and the first one I remember that happening with, oh, I want to say he was around 16 and he just got a, a gas station job, I want to say it was Diamond and Pearl? And I didn't have a DS at the time, so he ended up giving that to someone else. But he's always given me the Pokemon games he had extras of. So I got Omega Ruby. And I've said this many times in some of Intellivision Dude's live streams, or at least I think I have. But Pokemon, to me, lost its charm after Ruby and Sapphire. And not saying that these are good, or I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Those were the first two games where I was like, they're running out of ideas, aren't they? And it just didn't feel original or fresh anymore, and that's kind of where I fell off with the Pokemon games. That being said, after replaying this, I still kind of stand by that. Now, X, I played, and I enjoyed a little bit. I think I played it for like 20 hours in the first week, and most of that was strictly writing on nostalgia, and that I hadn't played a Pokemon game in a long time. And, I don't know, I just, I don't think I'll ever be able to get into the old, or the newer Pokemon games, like I did the old ones, sadly. Next up, I guess I'll go to the one Vita game I have, and that was Tearaway. I actually got this at our Kmart, and I normally don't say where I got games, because they're usually all from Hot Shop Gaming. Cheap plug. But anyways, I usually don't go out and buy newer games, but our Kmart, and I don't know if this is nationwide or just locally, but their games selection is fucking terrible, and according to a few people that work there, it... It's not looking like Kmart's going to last anymore, but anyways, they had all their bargain bin games set out in the cases and spread out, and we're talking like cheap, cheap DS shovelware for like 15 bucks, one was like 9 none of it was good, but they had all their Vita games on clearance, and I don't know if I showed the other ones that I got, but this one was $16, I went in there a week later, it was $8, and I had to get it, and that was Tearaway, which I like a lot, really, but the only part I don't like is the back touch screen. I don't know if it's because I have big hands, but anytime a game incorporates that, I don't particularly like it. Uh, but anyways, this is a really, really fun, unique game. Definitely pick it up if you have a Vita. The Vita, much like the PSP, in my opinion, it far surpasses the Nintendo 3DS in a lot of ways, including games. The only problem is they're not well-known games, and that hurts, because another great example is Soul Sacrifice. That is an amazingly unique and original game. No one's ever fucking heard of it, though. And I think the Monster Hunter crowd would actually like that. Or Tokuden, uh, Age of Demons. That's another great Vita game that just no one's ever heard of. Yet, it's... It's sad, I mean... And I put the failure of the Vita completely on Sony, because they marketed it like shit. And they don't really market it anymore. Like, 3DS still gets huge posters and GameStop and stuff. And you don't see any of that for the fucking Vita. And I really think Sony could have done a better job. And I honestly think the Vita could have beat the 3DS with a better campaign. Or marketing campaign. And I know, I'm probably alone in that, but it's, it's very true. So this next game, I've actually been wanting for a very long time. And no place has ever had it, no store or no chain stores had it, and it finally came into the store I work at, and I was kind of excited, and that is Overlord. Now, I first heard about this game well after its release. I think it was either in uh, Xbox Magazine or Game Informer. Where it was whichever one of those had the 20 or two, 20,000 pennies or less uh, category where they would market games that were $20 and under. And this was in there, and it looked so interesting, and it's kind of fun. 
the only issue I had with it, and it's not really an issue, it's more of a learning curve, is using the right thumbstick to control, not the camera, it controls your minions, I think. It's been a month since I played this game, or a month or two, but that was the only part that really threw me off. And it's, it's a really fun and unique game, and it kind of has the art style of, like, Fable mixed with a little bit of World of Warcraft. Definitely a fun game. And I'm going to skip that one for last. And I said current games. This is sadly a decade old now. And I wanted to get this the day it came out. And no place fucking had it. And it's been one of my holy grails of gaming. Even though it's dirt fucking cheap. And that is the San Andreas Special Edition. And this one's pretty beat up. So I might upgrade it at some point. And the disc is scratched. Which would have bothered me. If I didn't already have five black label copies of San Andreas for the PS2, because I'm a hoarder and stuff. But anyways, and all it is, is it comes with this extra little DVD. <laughs> That's it. And it's not aimed at my, for my viewing type. Uh, it's basically about lowriders. Which is weird, because this is my favorite San Andreas game. Yet I don't like gangster rap, and I never really got into the gangs, or gang history stuff and like gangs or gangster town was it on history channel or something like that ganglands i never got into that show or anything really about it but something about this game i love and it's just such a fun game and i can't recommend this game enough and you can get it on the 360 i'm not sure about the ps3 I'm, it has to be on the ps3 but and it's basically oddly enough the ios version but it's pretty good uh some glitches in that version but and it, it kind of bugs me because it's had no patches and it's been out for, oh, it has to have been out for like at least seven or eight months by now. Alright, and uh, I guess I'll show a game I've shown in a pickup video already, but this is the PS3 version of it. And that is Stick of Truth. And I absolutely love this game, so I got the PS3 version of it. And, and I swear I'm not a fanboy, but if... And a lot of people think I just love the 360 and hate on the PS3, and that's not true. But for some reason, multiplats, at least in my experience, on the PS3, just, they experience lag that's unneeded. Now, first-party titles run fantastic on the PS3 for the most part, but, and this is just another one that, that proves that, and it's the weirdest lag, like, it doesn't lag when you don't want it to lag, it's when you transition to another screen, Without fail, almost every time, there's just enough lag to make you be like, how, are, how is this system struggling to play this game? And I guess that's not technically what it... It's not technically struggling. It's just... If you know anything about the PS3, it kind of has a wonky architecture that uh, Sony thought would be better than it actually was. Thankfully, and I'm assuming, they fixed that with the PS4, and that's one of the reasons why I want to get a PS4 over an Xbox One. The next game, and this game sucks not because it's on the PS3, but because it sucks. And it's weird because there's a lot of people that love this game and a lot of people that hate it, and that is Murdered Soul Suspect. I'm on the train of not liking this game at all. Basically what it feels like is a game that had a game-breaking glitch in it, and then they decided to make that glitch a feature and that is your ghost walking through walls except they don't I, I don't like that feature at all and at least for me it dis disoriented me to no fucking end like I can't play this game for more than 30 minutes without getting the head spins because it's just it's disorienting and I, I can't stand this game I'm sorry if you love this game because a lot of people did like this game I did not Alright, next up is, while we're on the poopy train, and I'm shitting on games, this is another loved one that I just, I put off on picking up for, what was it, two, three years now? And I don't know why, I just, I didn't, I watched all the trailers, it didn't look that interesting to me, despite me liking the first two a lot. Like, the first Far Cry, which I just gave away which game this is, is one of my favorite PC games of all time. So you can guess what that is, and that is Far Cry 3. So I picked up the PS3 version originally, and they seem to be pretty much on par, uh, gameplay-wise, on both systems. 
But the reason I re-picked it up is because I put like 30 hours into this game. And I just... The upgrade system, or hunting, after the first like 15 hours, it's pointless. Because you've upgraded almost everything. And the only things you'll need to upgrade <clears throat> are like the ones where you have to have a specific animal and hunt it. Which just wasn't worth it for me. And my hands started cramping. And I'm not shitting on the PS3, guys. It's just... First person shooters on the PS3 controller for me don't do it for me. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. So I picked up this version, and while it was less hand cramping, I didn't like it anymore, sadly. Uh, I do plan on finishing the game just because it's not a bad game per se, it's just not my cup of tea. And I'm sorry. And I didn't find Voss to be that interesting. Like, everyone went crazy when this game came out about it. He was such a good villain. And. I don't know, maybe I'm just sick of the Heath Ledger's Joker stereotype of a bad guy. Where it's like, oh yeah, he's he's crazy and stuff. That's that's cool, that's that's cool. And I just didn't find him that interesting of a boss. Or er, boss. Villain. And uh according like I haven't beat the game, but apparently he's not even the main fucking villain in the game. Like he gets there's a boss after him or something. I don't know. Alright, so next up is Fable Anniversary. Now, I love the first Fable, and it's that Morrowind and the Knights of the Old Republic are pretty much the only reasons I own an original Xbox. I was not a fan of that system whatsoever. So when this released, I was, I was definitely interested in it, and I finally got it. And the best thing I can say about this is, if you haven't played Fable, definitely buy this. It's worth it, kind of. But as someone that has the original game and the Lost Chapters, the only reason I prefer this version is the camera with the right stick is slightly fixed. And that was always one of my main issues with the first Fable. But, yeah. If you don't have it, get this version. Or if you don't have an original Xbox, get this version. Alright, next up is... A game I can't talk too much about. <laughs> it got me excited when I heard about this game because I heard it was like three games. It was like Dark Souls, Skyrim, and... Dark Souls, Skyrim. Monster Hunter. Sorry, brain fart. And that got me excited as hell because I love all those games to death. And I just, I've just i maybe put 20 minutes into this game. <laughs> so I can't really talk about it, but I will show it. And that is Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. And I believe Dark Arisen, Arisen is just... Dragon's Dogma with the DLC. It says it includes the complete version of the original, so I'm, that's what I'm assuming it is. Next up is a game I absolutely adore and I was scared I was going to hate because a lot of the bigger channels that focus on this game, or the series of games, they weren't the kindest about it. And that is Dark Souls 2. A, a lot of people just shat on this game, and I think it's kind of unjust. Like, the first Dark Souls I went in with a blind playthrough of. I think that's how you should experience Soul games, because it, it just makes them more interesting, in my opinion. There are some games where you can watch walkthroughs and go along with it, and it just doesn't really ruin the experience, but I have a feeling that it would ruin the experience for a Dark Souls game. But anyways, a lot of people said this was an easier game. It definitely had easier boss battles, and there was a lot of easy bosses in this game. But the ones that were hard were fucking hard. Like, Smelter Demon took me, like, seven tries to beat. Uh, Nisandra, which is the last boss battle, just continually fucked me up. <coughs> I'm trying to think of another boss that gave me a lot of issue. Um, it was that one in the Gulch. Which, uh, main complaint about this game is the fucking Gulch. Never in a game, in a Souls game, have I felt that the game was just being cheap, but that place felt insanely cheap. Like, it's just shooting poison at you, you have to go break all the statues, it's monotonous. I, I did not like the gulch whatsoever. The boss was a lot of fun, though. And I can't remember his name, holy shit. Well, anyways, he's basically a boss made up of other human beings, like, mushed together, and it was... Just getting his timings down was not easy. But anyways, I can definitely recommend this game now. 
I was worried about it, and turns out I didn't have much to be worried about. There are still some things I didn't like. I don't like that the enemies disappear after 15 tries, and you can say that using a bonfire aesthetic revives them, but in New Game Plus mode, and I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that. Uh, I like going through New Game Plus at once, not just like in chunks. That being said, you can go into New Game Plus, and that's another part where this game fucking shines. Like, new enemies appear right off the bat in things betwixt, like these falconer guys, which are... I about pooed my pants when I first... Because I didn't think there was going to be any enemies in the in the very beginning, like when you're going to the house with the old, old fire keepers. I think they're fire keepers. But anyways, can't recommend this game enough. And I want to say thanks for watching. You really have no reason to watch because I haven't done anything in a while. But if you do watch this, thank you very much. And I'll be back soon. I'm actually getting ready to record another video, so same shirt, same sunlight, and everything. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.